So we're going to see chairs, the most basic form. And of course, there's your basic stools. Uh, it's very similar to the Jacobine, but usually with a lot less detail than what you see in the English Jacobine. That being said, we're focusing primarily on chairs. And as we move through, what you tend to see in America early on is going to be multi-purpose furniture. For example, the chair table, or as we dealt with it earlier, the monk's chair. It's basically the same form, although you can have either a square or round back. Sometimes this is called a hutch table, or it has a number of different names. Uh, but basically, it's the same thing. You have a tabletop that is there, as well as a chair. This is incredibly useful if I'm living in a fairly small space with limited resources, because now I can either sit or create a table as needed. So it is multi-purpose, and that is something that we get away from the more that income rises and we have disposable income. But in this period, of course, that doesn't happen all that often. We will also see the Brewster chair. Now, the Brewster chair is very similar to that turn chair that we looked at or throne chair that we looked at in the past. In fact, it's exactly the same idea. The seat tends to be wider, but we have a wider front than we do the back. Uh, although the back is much wider than what we saw in earlier examples. You will notice that the lathe work for the supports, uh, for the back supports as well as those front legs, is much more basic, and it's a very heavy leg on that. In fact, everything here looks a little bit heavy and a little bit clumsy. Now, the importance here, let me remind you why we dealt with the throne chair in the past, is it's very inexpensive to create. I can throw all the pieces, in other words, I can lathe all the pieces, and then simply join them together. And since there are no really complex angles on the Brewster chair, it's simple, it's straightforward, it's fairly attractive, and it's inexpensive. But it's a little bit fanciful. So we will also see the carver chair, which is very similar. It's an entirely thrown chair, but it's named for the first governor of Plymouth. And what they're doing is they're simplifying that Brewster chair to its necessary components. So the back, you'll notice, we only have three spindles. The arms are generally very, very thin and they're straight. Occasionally, there's a little bit of a taper, but generally, they're going to be straight. You'll notice that there's very little ornamentation here. Uh, there's a little bit, but not much. And the seats tend to be a rush or some form of woven seat. Again, they're saving materials, and it makes life a lot easier. It also makes for a more comfortable seat that is easily renewed. I simply cut it off and recane it, or in this case, reweave it. We will see the slap back chair, again with that woven quarter pattern in the seat. And here, the difference is that those slats in the back are either half spindles, so they've taken a spindle cut in half and flattened it, or sometimes they're flat slats overall, simply cut into a very simple shape. The arms can be slats, in other words, flat pieces of wood, or they can be turned, as in this example. But the thing that really stands out with our uh, Jacobean slapback is those hand rests. So you'll notice a very large round hand rest sitting right here at the end of the arm. And that stands out as a very American style. Uh, it's something we don't typically see in a lot of European furniture. And it also stands out for this very specific period, uh, the American Jacobean. So it's something to look for if you're looking at furniture. We will also see the American settle. And this is again a high back bench. The whole purpose of it is to pull it up in front of a fire. The wings will keep the wind off of you if there's a breeze coming through the home. Sometimes these even have a hood on them. So you would see a flat piece across the top, maybe 12 to 24 inches wide, that would create more cover and more space to warm up. And again, it's a multi-purpose piece. You can have storage underneath. Uh, in American examples, we tend to have a very wide wing because these are more pioneer people. So 
life is a little bit harder, you want that extra warmth of the larger wing, and sometimes you'll have things like hearts and stars cut into them. Uh, typically, the back is going to be panel construction in America rather than board construction, but sometimes you do see board. You're getting a sense that things are really muddy when we get into America, and especially the original colonies. And that's because we have so many influences and so many different elements coming into play, so much context that things just get very complicated. We see a lot of hybridization.